those other public works were unprofitable or just a waste of money. So, the, but um, the, unfortunately, there were no big other projects in around the Tokyo area since the Tokyo Olympic, because still that well, uh, the growth rate of in the Tokyo area far exceeded the growth rate in the regions. And indeed, actually, the population in Tokyo area has been growing, while the, uh, the total population in Japan was falling. And so that there were still the, uh, more resources flowing in to the Tokyo area in the past. So that actually, the public works may not be needed. But it doesn't mean that uh, the infrastructure uh, project in Tokyo area is inefficient. It's totally the opposite. So the, the marginal impact from the um, additional money spent on the public works in Tokyo would be extremely beneficial. And as actually the more and more people and the companies are gathering and coming to Tokyo area from all over the world, Tokyo is the greatest, uh, the, one of the greatest um, the, the area in the world. And I, because Shirakasen and I visit so many different countries and uh, uh, on business, and I always find that the Tokyo should be the one of the best other uh, business centers in the world. But unfortunately, because of the uh, the many red tapes and the, the regulations and the, and also the uh, the almost in, uh, prohibitive the high tax rate. Then naturally, the, even if the people want to come to Tokyo, they don't. Instead, they will go to Hong Kong and Singapore. And so the, now is the right time to, that the, we should review the, what is needed for Tokyo to be uh, the, uh, the business center in Asia and in the world. So that if the government takes this uh, great opportunity to do that, then actually it will be a big benefit for Tokyo. And naturally, the, it may not be a benefit for the rest of the Japan. But the Tokyo is the most, has the most advan advantageous the business models. You know, and also, the re region, regional economy should share more sense of urgencies. So that actually, the, they, what they should do is very simple. They should uh, accelerate the pace of the movement towards the consolidation of the prefectures, those should say. And the, the, there is no reason why we should have a 47 prefectures. And uh, so that, well, basically, I supported the, uh, the Hashimoto Son's initiatives, but unfortunately, yesterday he showed the, uh, the declining popularities, and uh, uh, for some reason, uh, and uh, but uh, I think that his initiative was not wrong, and it is in the right direction, and uh, so the actually the uh, and also if the Tokyo enjoys a high growth rate, in my view that the consumption tax rate in Tokyo should be five percent point higher than uh, the rest of the regions. In other words, and the Tokyo people in Tokyo should pay more. And those are increase in tax revenues should be paid back to the to the region. Then the, all the uh, the people in the region would not complain. I think. Thank you. Please. Hi, uh, Yuri Nagano for BNA. Um, I'd like to ask about uh, the timing uh, for the consumption tax uh, hike, with, uh, coupled with the corporate tax hike. And uh, if you can, you know, what you think, um, if you can go beyond the obvious, I mean, it's good for companies, uh, what could be potential sort of, I don't know, effects? I mean, if you can sort of expand on that. Uh, yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit more? You said the corporate tax. Yes. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, to to uh, abolish the reconstruction tax like a year earlier, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then, you know, beyond that, try to bring it down. I mean, I, I think yeah. Aso-san, uh, you seem to, you know, agree with Aso-san on many points. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, I mean, you know, he, they, they have been resisting this because they, they don't want uh, maybe people saying we don't want any more consumption tax hugs now. Okay, um, uh, I think uh, this is a deal between uh, uh, Aso-san, the Minister of Finance, and the Prime Minister's office, I think. Naturally, the, any uh, proposal to um, the, the uh, Minister of Finance opposes to any idea of the tax rate cut. And uh, so they love any idea of the tax rate hike. This is a very simple thing. And the people don't want any tax rate hike. That is almost a simple thing. And um, they, so the, the, in the next round, I think, uh, the, when the government proposed, well, tried to raise the consumption tax rate from 8% to, to 
And um, they, so that is a time when we are likely to see the introduction of the reduced tax rate on the foods and other the necessary goods. And so that the people should accept the tax rate hike. And also, the, this time, uh, the, the probably, although the, it's not a done deal y yet, so we have to wait until tomorrow, though, but uh, the removal of the surcharge of the corporate tax rate and from 35 to 38% should be removed. And, uh, but the Minister of, and although the uh, Abe, Prime Minister Abe, wants to uh, uh, push the uh, Minister of Finance to accept the further corporate tax rate cut, but naturally, the, at, the, at this time, uh, uh, the Minister of Finance uh, wouldn't say yes, and because of the it's a sort of strategies, and uh, so the Minister of Finance would like to get another consumption tax rate hike, definitely from eight to ten percent, and that is a time when probably they accept the further uh, the, uh, the cut in the uh, corporate tax rate. So that we'll see something like that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Thompson from the, <coughs> from the Danish Embassy. Thank you very much for your interesting presentations. Um, I'd like to, to hear about um, the wage hike. As I understand it, uh, hiking wages is an important part of, uh, of abenomics. And if inflation goes up and wages stay the same, as you predict, I don't know, maybe you can chip in on, on, on the prediction on that too, that basically means that every Japanese is going to be poor. Uh, which would mean that growth will fall. That would at least be the logical assumption. Could you, could you comment uh, uh, on that and, and how to get out of that conundrum? Second point um, regarding the corporate tax. Japan has uh, the highest uh, potential corporate tax in the OECD. But as I understand it, most or many companies don't pay very much tax, if at all. Um, but there's very little talk about a reform of the corporate tax system. It would seem to me to be, rather than cutting the corporate tax, the potential uh, tax rate you, you, you pay, it would seem to be smarter to reform the system so the corporations actually would start paying tax and get, it's more difficult to get the, the loopholes. What are your thoughts on that, and is that something which are in the works? Thank you very much. Yeah, I think on wage, I think we have already talked about you know uh, wage wage outlook quite uh, quite I think the uh, intensively. I think the in my view, um, the currently wage growth is is like you know on the on the regular pay uh, down 0.5 cent year by year kind of number we're looking for for the rest of the year. And next year on the macro level, wage growth would be maybe 0.5 plus. So. Not a big amount of, I think, the wage increase, but still some, some positive. But I, again, inflation is like two and a half. So two and a half point five minus two. So um, in, in, in that's why you know, I, I, have, I have explained a lot in my presentation, but I think the, uh, our outlook for consumption is, is, is not so, so good. And again, the wage dynamics, uh, we don't know yet whether or not you know, companies are really paying more wages or any potential for that, um, but are we, we're fairly pessimistic about the long-term wage outlook even beyond the 14. So maybe slightly positive, but not necessarily that big positive number. But our point is that if they do st stop hiking VAT, I think the situation will be normalized, right? It's not like you know, every year. I think the, the reason why I'm, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm, I'm saying 1% every year is, is 1% and 0.5 means minus 0.5. So every year, some deterioration. So some argue that some direction every year and one off big direction does not do not show any big difference. But in, in our view, anyhow, you know, the small hikes would be better, not shocking the consumers. And you know, beyond the 15, 16, we're still fairly optimistic pessimist about the wage growth. So anyhow, you know, the um, defeat or you know beating wage difference is very difficult. On the corporate income, um, I fairly I'm very sympathetic about your view of the making more small business to pay more corporate income tax. 
If there's a case, I think a corporate income tax rate reduction would be easier, much easier. And that would be one thing to do. And uh, of course, you know, that should require the um, come downsizing uh, income deductives for small businesses. So small businesses, just their, 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 you know, um, their profit income kind of uh, accounting is really, um, you know, the strange or you, you can deduct everything. You even you can deduct your food expenditure. So it is kind of strange things to, for, for the government to continue to you know, accept that is happening. So strengthening of the small businesses uh, uh, well, the corporate income tax base is really important. If there's a case, I think the reducing corporate income tax rate would, much, would become much easier. And they should do that, in my view. OK, um, I have a couple comments. And the first, uh, the role of the, the wage rate. Actually, the, um, the, you have to distinguish a couple of different uh, the concept. Uh, first, uh, the wage rate and the labor income. That's a huge difference between the two. What I said is that it's very hard to imagine that the hourly wage rate would rise anytime so soon because of the stickiness of the, the role of those the wage rates. So the, it, it takes time because uh, it, takes, um, it takes time for the companies to be convinced that the uh, corporate profit will rise or will remain elevated. And uh, the, it's only after that that they will raise uh, the wage rate or hourly wage rate. And because the wage rate is a fixed cost, but in Japan, actually, the nearly 20% of the labor incomes are paid by bonuses. So that in my view, uh, the bonus uh, is uh, likely to rise the first uh, before the, the uh, rise in the wage rate. So the labor income will increase um, first based on a rise in the bonuses. So you will, you will see it and in December this year and the June next year. And the eventual, so it takes at least a few years before the wage rate will rise. But the a rise in the wage rate is not because of the, any sort of the moral suasion by the government, but because of the tightening labor market. So the market mechanism will push up. And in other words, the good economy will lead to a rise in the wage rate that we will see it in a few years' time. And also another very important parameter to explain the consumption is the savings rate. And uh, they actually, the, um, the because of the bad policies and because of the unfavorable global economic environment, the savings rate picked up in the past few years, or maybe three, four years. Uh, well, um, they to it's uh, totally against the prolonged, uh, the long-term, uh, the declining trend of the savings rate in Japan, actually, which have been falling because of the demographics. But the, the national statistics, national um, the income statistics show that the wage uh, savings rate has been rising. But this means that there is plenty of the rooms for the consumption uh, to rise, or plenty of rooms for the savings rate to be down to below or to up to or below the trend line. And uh, so in the meantime, consumption could be well, held up uh, because of the, um, the, uh, the decline in the savings rate. What is needed for the savings rate to fall? That is uh, um, the, so the, um, the good sentiment and for good consumer sentiment. And so in that sense, um, the, uh, the more per, um, the rise in uh, um, the asset prices are basically good for everybody. And uh, so far, we have seen a rise in the stock prices and the uh, foreign exchange rate. And what we want to see, or the, I, what I want to see, is a rise in the real estate prices. And uh, the, it's not uh, good. It's it's not only it's it's good not only for the rich people, but for everybody. For example, and especially for the small firms. And uh, the, there, one of the problems in Japan is that uh, still we have so many zombie companies, and uh, they. Uh, because they remain zombie, not because they want to be zombie. They want to get out of zombie, but they can't because they are, they are heavily indebted. They have to um, they repay the loans to the banks, but they can't at the moment. And also the banks don't have any incentive uh, to, um, they, uh, to take the money back from them. And uh, so the, but if the real estate prices rise, then they can repay the loan by selling their real estate. And also, uh, you know the role of the reverse mortgages. 
And now the, I'm very happy to hear that the, some regional banks started uh, the, uh, the new, uh, the reverse mortgage uh, the, the pro, uh, products recently. So the, this is the main, partly because of the expectation that the real estate prices will be rising. So there are a number of the advantage from a rise in the mortgage, uh, the, sorry, uh, the real estate prices in, a, in, a, in general, the asset prices. So the, the number of the countermeasures um, the, to um, argue against uh, the, your point. And the second is uh, uh, the corporate tax rate issue. Yes, and the problem in Japan is a very narrow tax base on everything except the consumption tax rate. So that's why the consumption tax rate uh, must be well, raised urgently and to expand the tax, uh, the tax base. It's true that the only a small portion of the corporations pay uh, the, the, the tax, corporate tax, and one of the reasons is that uh, the, the in Japan's the corporate tax uh, rule, the, um, the loss carryover is allowed for seven years. It's very long. So still, the, even the large companies don't pay any corporate tax because uh, they had a huge loss in 2008 and nine. And another, and also even for those companies who are paying the corporate tax, uh, you are right. And effective corporate tax rate is not 40 percent. It should be somewhere be between 30 and 35 percent because the uh, tax rate is too high and it gives uh, the, those firms uh, incentives to avoid it legally, like uh, well, setting up a paper company, some uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the tax-free area, and uh, the, the, so the, it, it's low. But the biggest problem from the uh, high corporate tax rate is that we are loser in terms of the competition with Hong Kong and Singapore. And especially as long as the corporate tax rate remains high, we can't invite uh, the foreign companies to Japan. And another big problem is uh, just income tax, but I, I don't want to talk about that this time. So that my, actually one of the purposes of the, those tax policy is to adjust the, um, those, the tax rate uh, so that Japan can compete with the Hong Kong and Singapore. And the, still the, well, we are living in a globalized economy. So in that sense, unfortunately, uh, government cannot collect the money through the increase in or the uh, high level of the uh, direct tax. Only indirect tax is a measure to uh, collect the tax, uh, to, inc to keep the uh, tax revenues. You, sir, yes, please. <coughs> Uh, my name is Fujita, and I'm with the Kokumin Shinbun. Uh, the founder of uh, my newspaper is Tokutomi Soho, a student of Yaesa in the Meiji period. And of course, you know, to last Tokyo Olympic game in uh, 1964 uh, was a you know, recovery, uh, representing recovery from the uh, war, which we lost. But um, currently in the diet, uh, there's a kind of movement that we should, uh, you know, make November 3rd a Meiji day because it's uh, Emperor Meiji's birthday. So my question is, uh, well, I understand you're basically uh, good at analyzing things, but uh, can you uh, make any radical breakthrough suggestion to make uh, Abenog mix very successful, successful and, uh, you know, make Japan like uh, good old days of uh, Meiji, <laughs> if you can think of any. And I, either of you can answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, yes, um, the, we need some um, sort of the big change, breakthrough, like a major restorations. And um, the, in, in those days, if my understanding is right, uh, the main motivation for the people to follow those radical movements is a sense of the urgencies. I think I, in mid, I, I, I forgot exactly uh, the, uh, the year, and there was an opium war in, uh, in China, and the Japanese, uh, the um, intelligent people, or in those, even, in, even though the, uh, the Japan was closed, but um, they, they knew what happened in China. So the, uh, Japan didn't want to be a colony of the Western uh, countries. So that is a big motivation. And uh, the question is whether we have this kind of the external factors. And at the moment, yes, there is. But the question is whether the people share this kind of the urgencies. 
And also another issue is that the population. At that time, population is growing tremendously. There's plenty of room on the upside of the population, but the population is shrinking at the moment. And also there is a, in, and when an economy fails, there is a very simple rule, and if you look back to history, and that is the internal conflict, conflict of interest, would prevent uh, the, um, the older people from having any kind of consensus, which is very painful though. And uh, so this time, actually, is a, the one of the biggest uh, the, infl uh, the conflict of interest is the, um, the conflict of interest among generations. So the, still the, um, the old people don't want to lose uh, the, uh, the vest their vested interest. That is, uh, the extremely beneficial treatment on the social securities. And, uh, the, but naturally, the, uh, the kids don't have any voting power. And even uh, uh, the next, next generation who are not born don't have any voting power. And actually, the, what we are doing is to still the increase the fiscal deficit and the government debt at the cost of the benefit from the next and the next generations. Whether the, the question is whether the democracy has a sort of a own a mechanism to correct it, unfortunately, no. So that actually, the, some people propose that the a pregnant a mother pregnant woman should have two votes or three votes if they have a twins. At, and uh, so the, uh, the, that may be the solution, but unfortunately this doesn't seem to work at the moment. So that there are a number of different and similar. I really hope that the people could share those the sense of urgency at the moment. And uh, so that that is a role of the, I think, economist to let people know that, well, if we don't do anything urgently, so we, we would have, have a big uh, the problem in the future. That is actually the same situation as the people in the Meiji area had. And, but it, that was the external pressure. But the problem this time, the problem is within us. So that's a very big difference, I think. Yeah, I, I think I cannot you know, have any breakthrough kind of idea. Uh, only thing to do is to increase population. <laughs> so, um, we have been thinking about many, many different economic themes, but our conclusion is that anyhow we have to stop the contraction of the um, population that's really needed. We are fairly pessimistic about productivity kind of things. We do not buy the argument of deregulation much. Because you know, the, anyhow the economic growth is really de determined by population growth. And we we, we tend to think that uh, the Abbasan's immigration policy is, is, um, is, is really cons conservative. So uh, to be very straightforward, no way out. This country is, is, is shrinking or sinking. But I have a, just one small comment, and I have a different view. And yes, population is uh, one of the very important factors to explain the growth. But still, the world, I have a more optimistic view on the productivities. Answer is uh, unknown at the moment, though. And so the, in that sense, the Abe's policy to focus on immig new immigration policy, that is uh, focusing on the uh, immigration of the high-skilled workers. And actually, there are a number of different immigration policies. And in 2004, 5, 6, we invited many immigrants from the Brazil, and, uh, and the may, who those workers uh, mainly uh, were employed at the auto industries in Shizuoka Prefecture, for example. But in 2008 and 2009, when the economy turned bad, actually, they lost a the job. So the government gave them a free air ticket to get them back home. And so that now the, what we learned is now the manufacturing sector is very volatile. If the manufacturing want uh, the cheap labor, they should go abroad. And, but instead, actually, we should invite more high-skilled workers and, uh, in many uh, areas to trigger the innovations. So the, even also the, what, the challenging issue is that uh, the, the whether what we should, well, um, the, even if population is not growing, the question is whether uh, a rise in the productivity could offset the impact from the, uh, the decline in the population. And that is quite challenging, and, but that is an uh, area where the abenomics should focus on. Okay, Khaldul. Thank you. Khaldul Nazari, Pan Orient News. Uh, with the closing down of the uh, nuclear power plants, Japan is increasingly import natural resources, oil and gas. And in Japan, the tax on these products are one of the highest in the world. 
And uh, if you raise the tax to 10%, the tax on the natural resources will uh, uh, obviously rise again, and that might affect the other sectors of the society that depends, like transportation or other things. Also, Japan imports a lot of uh, products from overseas and it implies, uh, imposes high tax. So how do you think the, the price of yen would affect this and the, the import of natural resources? Uh, both of them in, uh, affect the tax uh, proposal by the government to raise the tax. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, if the yen continues to weaken and import inflation uh, continues to strengthen, of course, you know, the you know, combined with the VAT hike, I think the um, economy will suffer more cost increases. But our point is if the cost goes up and if the consumption goes down, that is good. For a, the guy who, do, who tend to think that Japan has to have the kind of balance, trade balance. So in, in my view, as I pointed out, the why the consumption has to be dampened because we need to have the balance, trade, trade balance. So. If the inflation kicks in, like VAT and energy inflation, if, if it dampens consumption, that is what Mr. Finance wants to, to see. Fine. So if he, the, I think the, the worst case is the VAT hike, energy inflation, but consumption do not necessarily go down, and, or I think you know, if it's not leading to a, any, any export increases, Japan will continue to suffer a um, the kind of structural deficit of the, of the external balance. So in my view, punching consumption does make sense. And through VAT hike and through energy inflation does make sense as well. So remember that this country is in the contractional equilibrium country. I'm very pessimistic about the growth in the future, right? So con con contractional economic equilibrium means we need to have the lower demand because supply is shrinking because of aging population. The country's supply capacity is gradually sinking. That's why Kano-san is very much of, you know, the, uh, talking about the productivity because productivity is supply side issue, right? But if you're pessimistic about supply side growth, we need to have the weaker demand. That is fine. So this is my view. This is a contra this is contractionally country. This is not expanding country. And I think the trying to increase supply is, is one of the, of course, the main thing for the policy prescription, but I do not think that's really working because aging population is, is dampening productivity. So as Kano-san very properly argued, we need to have the middle-aged and high-skilled experts to come to Japan to, to try to keep the productivity from falling, not pushing up from falling, right? But again, this inflation is okay because this inflation is dampening consumption. This is what they want to do. That's why they, they, they are rising VAT. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Shirakasan, for very provocative uh, the comments. Um, I'm not buying the discussion on the, uh, the contractional equilibrium. There is no equilibrium if the economy continues to uh, the contract. The, that's why we definitely need growth. Exp mm. There is only equilibrium in expansion, expansionary e the economies. And um, the, but the, my comment is on the role of the, uh, the nuclear power plant. And uh, well, I, I fully understand why people don't, um, don't want to support the, uh, the reoperate, reoperation of the nuclear power plant. But my point is that people should be consistent in themselves. Okay, and the, the number of um, the, the surveys we show that the people don't uh, support the idea of the uh, of the idea that the nuclear power plant should start the reoperating, and but if that is the case, people should accept the rise in the cost, and uh, so if they say say that okay, I don't want to see any uh, reoperation of the um, the nuclear power plant, but I accept the rise in the wage uh, the energy cost by thirty percent. It's okay, but many people say, I don't want a nuclear power plant, but I don't want the, uh, the rise in the cost. This is totally inconsistent. This is just emotional discussions. And so people, unfortunately, we have to choose either one of the solutions, and if we don't want the nuclear power plant to restart operating, we have to accept a rise in the cost, 
and energy cost. And, but if we don't want to see a rise in energy cost, we have to accept uh, the, the gradual um, the, the recovering of the, uh, the operation of the nuclear power plant. And there are, I think, a number, not all, there are actually now at the moment 50 nuclear power plant. Probably the 10 out, out of 50 would be totally out of the questions and because of the problems and the, the vintage, etc. But I think at least 20 or 30 should be okay. And um, so that therefore that we should make a more the rational argument about uh, the nuclear power plant. Okay, unfortunately there is no time for further questions, so be prepared tomorrow for the big announcement. So for everybody, <laughs> consumption tax will go, will go up, but for corpor corporation will go down, but everybody <laughs> should be happy, right? Yeah. So we thank uh, uh, our guest speaker, and uh, last but not least, I will, on behalf of the club, I will uh, give uh, them a uh, one-year honorary membership of this club. So please uh, come to this club and share with us more time and having a coffee Thank together. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just one point. You refer to it as a VAT. You refer to the consumption tax as a